the battles of lewis and evesham by mrs r valentine for the librivox coffee break collection ten war and conflict this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org the battles of lewis and evesham by mrs r valentine from sea fights and land battles from alfred to victoria for the librivox coffee break collection ten war and conflict the first great battle fought in england itself after hastings was that of lewis unhappily a civil conflict between henry the third and his barons or rather simon de montfort earl of leicester and his party for the english peers were divided in the conflict on the royal side fought the great houses of bigard and bowen and the percies john cummin john balliol and robert bruce on the earl's side were gloucester derby de roos marmion grey fitzjohn seagrave de lucy de vesey and other nobles the royal army was encamped in a hollow near lewis in numbers it exceeded that of the rebel peers but the position was ill chosen and impeded their movements leicester encamped on the downs the son of that count de montfort known as the cruel persecutor of the albigenses he professed great religion and in token of the holiness of his cause this foreign champion of english liberties ordered his soldiers to wear a white cross on the breast as if they had been crusaders while his ally the bishop of chichester gave them a general absolution assuring them that all who should fall in the approaching strife would have won the crown of martyrdom the armies joined battle on the fourteenth of may twelve sixty four prince edward beginning the conflict by desperately attacking a body of londoners who formed part of the earl's forces these citizen soldiers were quite unequal to cope with the men-at-arms of the chivalrous prince they fled were pursued and cut down in heaps edward enraged at the cowardly insults they had lately offered to his mother was so eager in taking vengeance on them that he pursued them regardless of prudence and of the state of the other part of the field when the queen was attempting to escape from london to her son at windsor the populace on london bridge uttered cries of drown the witch and filth and stones were flung at the royal barge the mayor took pity on the distressed lady and carried her for safety to st paul's the experienced soldier who led the barons was quick to take advantage of this youthful indiscretion he made a concentrated attack on the division commanded by the king and by equal strategy and courage completely defeated the main body of the royal army taking henry himself prisoner before the prince returned from his pursuit of the londoners in whose behoof we may observe no sort of effort was made by the foreign champion whose cause they served the astonishment of the victorious edward when he returned and found his father and many of his nobles captives may be imagined before he could recover from it a body of horse charged his exhausted and breathless followers and the young soldier was taken prisoner thus ended the battle of lewis which cost the lives of five thousand Englishmen who were slain by their brethren on that fratricidal field. The power of Leicester was established by this battle, but it was soon to wane. The nobles who had rebelled against a legitimate sovereign were not likely to submit quietly to the rule of a foreign noble, who belonged to the English peerage only in right of his mother, Amicia the superiority he assumed over them and the continued captivity of both the king and his son roused the jealousy and remorse of the barons the earl of derby came over to the royal interests gloucester concerted a successful plan for the release of the prince and as soon as he was free the royalist chiefs rose again in different parts of the country 
after a plan suggested by the military genius of the prince himself at the same time earl warren who had escaped from the battle of lewis landed with a large body of knights and archers in south wales leicester carrying the captive king everywhere with him encamped at hereford leaving his son simon de montfort in sussex prince edward gave now the first proof of the great military skill for which he was afterwards famous he destroyed all the bridges and boats on the severn and secured the fords intending to keep the earl on the right bank of the river nevertheless leicester succeeded in crossing and encamped near worcester where he awaited the arrival of his son who was marching to meet him but this junction of forces was prevented by prince edward he surprised young simon by night at kenilworth captured his horses treasure and many of his knights and forced him to take refuge half clad in the castle the famous stronghold of the leicesters the unfortunate earl ignorant of this misfortune advanced to evesham on the river avon here at early morning on the fourth of august as he looked anxiously towards the hills near kenilworth he beheld his own banners advancing towards him it is my son it is simon he exclaimed joyfully but the joy was of short duration the war cry of his foes rang shortly afterwards on the air and he discovered that it was in royalist hands that the montfort banners were borne at the same moment his knights riding up brought tidings that on each flank and in the rear the foe was advancing he was shut in caught in a snare as his soldier's eye glanced round and marked the whole position he exclaimed they have learned from me the art of war then after a pause he added the lord have mercy on our souls for i see our bodies are prince edward's he made however a gallant effort to redeem them marshalling his men with his wonted skill then he took the sacrament and remained some short time in prayer his best course was plain that is to force the road to kenilworth and this he attempted but the effort was vain he then formed his soldiers into a solid circle at the top of the hill and thus in a manner entrenched by spears repulsed several charges of the royalists who attacked him at all points we have said he kept the poor old imbecile king always near him at evesham the sovereign cased in armour with his visor down was compelled to mount a war-horse and mingle with the rebel ranks in one of the prince's charges poor henry was unhorsed and in danger of being slain but edward heard amid the tumult the cry of a well-known voice i am henry of winchester your king and at once flew to the spot rescued his father and bore him tenderly from the melee the great and brave edward longshanks was a dutiful and loving son then and ever his grief for his poor old father's death is on record we can never have a second father he said mournfully when asked why he mourned so much more for the king's death an old man than for that of his own infant son but to return to the battle of evesham leicester's horse was killed under him but the earl rose from his fallen steed and continued fighting bravely on foot his welsh followers were broken and fled on every side pressed on the ever-increasing numbers of the foe do you give quarter he demanded at last of his antagonists no quarter was the reply for a traitor his gallant son henry fell beside him the best and bravest of his adherents lay in heaps on the fatal field and wearied worn and hopeless the great earl at last fell sword in hand with a dauntless courage worthy of a better cause the royalists stained their victory by great and excessive cruelty death could not satisfy their vengeance 
leicester's body was mutilated and one hundred and eighty of his noblest adherents were slain no quarter being given or prisoners made thus ended the battle of evesham the last of the baron's wars end of the battles of lewis and evesham by mrs r valentine for the librivox coffee break collection ten war and conflict 1870-1973